Well, folks, Tucker Carlson is a really interesting guy. He has some interesting takes on economics as well. He and I have had discussions about those in the past. He did an interview with Glenn Greenwald recently where he started attacking what he called libertarian economics. Tucker and I did this really interesting interview a couple of years ago now, probably longer than that, maybe five years ago now, where we talked about you know, the role of the government in the economy. And Tucker has a significantly more socialistic view of the economy than I do. Just blatantly, I mean, he has endorsed, for example, many of the plans of Senator Elizabeth Warren. This is not a slander against Tucker. I mean, it's something that he will say openly and clearly. Well, he was doing an interview the other day with Glenn Greenwald, who's also been a guest on my program. And, um, and they were talking about econo economics. And Tucker went into this rant about the evils of libertarian economics. And I think this is so short-sighted. I, I, I think it's really damaging to the future of American prosperity. And it relies on a bunch of falsehoods with regard to how the world works. Now, I want to listen to this because, again, I think this has spillover effects for foreign policy. It assumes that the best policy is going to be protectionist that high tariffs around America's borders are what's going to make American people wealthier and better off. It assumes that an uninvolved America in the world's fear is somehow going to make American citizens better off. It's all predicated on this notion of economics that ignores the importance of comparative advantage and price structure and all the rest in favor of vaguer concepts like beauty. Now, again, I'm not anti-beauty, but when I need a hamburger, I'm more interested in the hamburger than I am in, you know, the Venus de Milo. In any case, here is Tucker, and then I want to break this down a little bit because it's interesting. I think a lot of people have awakened to the now demonstrable fact that libertarian economics was a scam perpetrated by the beneficiaries of the economic system <laughs> that they were defending. So they created this whole intellectual okay, framework. Okay, pause that for a second. So I, I, don't I don't like this conspiracy theorizing about the nature of libertarian economics. Libertarian economics says the government should not control the free flow of goods and services. That's all libertarian economics says. A free market has property rights for you and the government can't get involved. That is the opposite of a conspiracy theory. A conspiracy is when a group of powerful people restructure an entire economy around particular interests. So, for example, if you were to push forward a protectionist policy, that is a policy designed to protect specific people in your country in a particular industry from competition from other people in the country and also elsewhere. That is the goal of it. That's an actual cadre of powerful people shaping the economic system for everyone. A baseline rule, which is that you have freely alienatable goods and services. You can alienate your own labor. You can, someone can pay you for your labor at a given wage. Like that's, that's not a conspiracy. Me giving you the ability to actually trade with other people. I'm, I'm confused as to how that would be a conspiracy by me. Now, it may not end to the benefit of people who are less competitive in a particular industry. And there may be very good reasons to protect certain industries. For example, for national security reasons. I think that we should be cutting down on trade from China because I don't think we should be enriching our enemies. That's a different thing from saying that economically speaking, there's this group, this, this secret group of libertarian economists who for their own benefit, like Milton Friedman was sitting in the back room and he's like, I need to be rich. And the only way I'm going to be rich is if there's free market economics. Uh, that's, that's just not true. It's just not true. There's a kind of politics that a lot of people are engaged in these days called emotivism. It's a basic philosophy that suggests that the reason your opponents are doing the thing they are doing is because of their own emotions. They're doing it because they're badly motivated, because they want the worst for you. I think it's an ugly way to do politics unless you have actual evidence that that is the case. It's a conspiracy way to do politics. It turns out that some people have ideas that are different from you. Sometimes it is because they're corrupt or they're being paid or whatever it is. But in many cases, it's because they just disagree. I don't think Tucker's saying what he's saying because he's being paid off or because he's a vested interest. And so I kind of object to this idea that anyone who disagrees disagrees because they're trying to actively harm somebody else. I, I don't think that that's the case when you are talking about, for example, free market economics. If all of this puts you in mind that the future is uncertain and that, you know, there's a lot of trepidation about what's going to happen, at the very least, you might think about diversifying your finances. You should diversify your savings with physical precious metals while stockpiling silver in your home safe. Birch Gold Group's most popular special of the year is on right now through December 22nd. For every $5,000 you spend with Birch Gold, they will send you a one ounce silver eagle coin for free. Text Ben to 989898 and claim your eligibility now. You can purchase gold and silver. You can have it shipped directly to your home or have Birch Gold's precious metal specialist help you convert an existing IRA or 401k into a tax sheltered IRA in gold for no money out of pocket. They'll send you free real silver for every five grand you purchase. Keep it for yourself. 
Give something with real value as a stocking stuffer this year. Just text keyword Ben to 989898 and claim your eligibility today. Birch Gold, they're the people I trust for my gold purchases with an A-plus rating. With the Better Business Bureau, thousands of happy customers. Now is the best time to buy gold from Birch Gold. Text Ben to 989898. Claim your eligibility for free silver on qualifying purchases before December 22nd. Text Ben to 989898. Here's more of Tucker intellectual framework to justify the private equity culture that's hollowed out the country. That's my personal view, and I've seen it up close my whole life, so I think it's a fair assessment. Um, I think a smarter way to assess an economic system is by its results. So you can assign whatever name you want to the economic system of the United States. You could call it market capitalism. You could call it, I mean, you could call it a whole host of different things. But I, I don't think any of that's useful. Those are boring conversations. I think you need to ask, does this economic system produce a lot of dollar stores? And if it does, it's not a system that you want because it degrades people and it makes their lives worse and it increases exponentially the amount of ugliness in your society. And anything that increases ugliness is evil. And it's just kind of, let's just start there. So if it's such a good system, why do we have all these dollar stores? Okay, that, that is an amazing statement. Why exactly are dollar stores the root of all evil? So first of all, I should point out at this point that according to Consumer Reports, 88% of Americans shop at dollar stores at least occasionally. My family shops at the dollar store at least occasionally. Almost a third of respondents in the 2021 Consumer Reports survey said they shop at dollar stores more than once a month. This seems like a really elitist attitude. It seems like um, dollar stores are good. You buy things for a dollar, or at least you did until Joe Biden took office and inflated the currency. Now it's like the $5 store. It is good to have products at your disposal for cheaper. This is a good thing. Why are we frowning upon this? It seems to me a much, much worse system is a system that produces no dollar stores. A system that produces more expensive goods and services that force your family to pay more. A system that, for example, relies on guilds and doesn't produce dollar or relies on government. Are bread lines better than dollar stores? Because there are a few choices when it comes to economics. Dollar stores are actually not. Now, when he And then he shifts into this discussion of it increases ugliness. Now, when he talks about ugliness, are we talking about like the physical stature of dollar stores? These are not like gorgeous, gothic edifices. These are, they're not beautiful to look at. Well, obviously, that's true. Obviously, it's true that dollar stores are not beautiful to look at. They look like big box stores. Also, that's one of the reasons that you can get the product for cheap at the dollar store. Because if they look like Gothic cathedrals, they'd have to upcharge you on the product in order to pay for the Gothic cathedral looking place where you're buying your tomatoes, which would be weird. There's this kind of break that's happening here where from an elite perspective, they don't like that it looks bad, that there's like an ugly store at the corner of town that makes it possible for you to feed your family. That seems really elitist to me. It also seems to be disconnected from history. If you go to Hungary, which is a country that a lot of people love and, and has a lot of history to it, and a lot of the architecture there is spectacular. I mean, Budapest is an incredibly beautiful city. I can tell you, because this is the way that it worked in Hungary for hundreds of years. Nobody was running the farmer's market from the church. They had like a hut outside. The equivalent of the dollar store in Hungary is not a Gothic cathedral. A Gothic cathedral is a Gothic cathedral. The equivalent of a dollar store in Hungary for hundreds of years was like an outdoor stall in the market that was significantly worse for produce than, for example, a dollar store. Here's the thing about America. America, as always, this is one of the beauties of America. It's the reason why we're a world power. This is one of the reasons we have always been a nascent and then obviously dominant world power. It is because in America, function frequently defeats beauty as a priority. Because Americans are a pragmatic and practical people who are seeking to better the lives of their citizens through things like economic opportunity, which means more dollar stores, not fewer dollar stores. Are you tired of the lies and the twists of the mainstream media talking points? Yeah, me too. Join me in my newest series, Fact, where I dismantle and bring truth to this tiring mainstream agenda. 